What's up everybody, Isaac here with Civil Engineering Academy. I'm coming at you again with a, another uh, podcast episode. I wanted to get this out on YouTube, but the video didn't work out so well. So I'm jumping on as an introduction to the podcast episode on YouTube. Still wanted to get it on there in case you are listening uh, on that platform. So anyway, you'll just be getting the audio version of that from here on out. Uh, I interview Cody Sims, who's also got a YouTube channel that's mentioned in the interview. Make sure you leave a comment about the, uh, him and thank him for this uh, interview. If you have any comments in general about what we're doing or topics, feel free to leave those in the comments as well. I uh, enjoyed this interview with Cody, but having said all that, I just want to do a quick intro on YouTube and we'll get right into the podcast episode. See ya. Hey, Cody, thanks for being on the show. We're excited to have you. Um, I've read a, a real brief info or bio at the beginning of the podcast, so people know a little bit about you. Um, but tell us a little bit more about yourself, why you made the decision to head into engineering uh, that way. Sure. Uh, first off, thank you for having me. That uh, it, It's really something special. Um, I'm just a country boy from Lone Oak, Arkansas, a small town, uh, about 20 minutes east of Little Rock. I got to name drop them because they don't really uh, have a lot of, I guess, exposure. Like this is a big deal to them. Kind of. Nice. Um, <laughs> I, I like hunting, grilling. Uh, I've got a beautiful fiance. We're planning on getting married August 15th. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, the reason why I went into head uh, to engineering, it's funny because I, uh, I was going to major in physics at the University of Central Arkansas. I got a scholarship to do that, but for some reason, uh, I got accepted at the U of A for engineering, so it's kind of a toss-up, and uh, for some reason, I, I I thought that engineering would be the best route for me as far as uh, how I could, you know, uh, uh, there's so many different aspects as far as engineering. I know that's the same way for physics, but it's a little bit different for engineering. Like, there's different I don't really know how to describe it, but there's civil, mechanical, electrical, all that different dimensions, I guess, or disciplines. Yeah. Uh, I went into engineering with that. Um, I think I was kind of doomed for engineering at the start. Uh, My mom drank V8 juice as she was pregnant. So she was, uh, she was drinking that gross like tomato kind, like cold. Uh, It's (laughs) not, not my favorite. I'm actually V8 energy right now. So it's kind of crazy that we're, we're talking about it. Uh, I like that kind. Yeah, yeah. It's it's actually kind of good. It's the pomegranate blueberry kind, but it's, <laughs> it's actually the good kind. But she drank the gross tomato kind. I don't understand. Um, <laughs> she said, I actually texted her last night. I was like, if you could, uh, if you could like, you told me all throughout my life that I was sort of a bright kid. I was a different kid than everybody else. Can you basically tell me some examples of how I were, I was uh, stepping out out of the shadows from other people. And she told me that when I was a toddler, I had figured out that if I twist this mag, uh, this uh, magic sort of cylinder top off of baby food, I'll be able to get all the baby food I want. And so they said, she said that when uh, mom and dad turned away for a second, turned back, I'd open the baby jar by myself, something like that as a toddler. I don't know, but I can't remember that. She said that I'd figure that, stuff so. out real early, huh? Yeah, no kidding. I still love food today. So <laughs> that was, uh, that was, something. What is that V8 juice, huh? That yeah, got, right. <laughs> got you going. Um, that's awesome. She said that whenever I would, uh, whenever a lot of kids would be playing, watching TV, uh, like watching SpongeBob, that type of thing. I would be over in the corner playing with Legos, building stuff, you know, that type of, uh, that type of thing. So I was always sort of the outlier, not necessarily the weird kid, but I mean, to this day, I guess something that is weird is I haven't watched the SpongeBob movie still. So you can wow. judge me. Yeah. You can judge me as you wish there, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I can tell not you about everybody Legos. loves SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah. So that's, uh, uh, that's, that's crazy. Something. Yeah. Hey, that's pretty cool. You know, every engineer is, you know, we're a special breed sometimes. Right. And so, you know, I, I don't think your experience is, is too off, but you got to love that your mom drank that V8 that really yeah. started the I don't know if it, journey. I don't know if it correlates directly to, you know, <laughs> good brain health or engineering, but it, I'm sure it did something. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, that's awesome story. Um, so let's talk about, I guess a little bit about the school. Why, why, 
why did you choose the school you did? Uh, you mentioned going into either physics or engineering. So was that the, was that the decision maker or? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I think okay. I was, I was going to get, uh, I was between three schools. I had to, I had to think about that. I was with three <laughs> schools. Uh, it was between Washita Baptist university of central Arkansas and the U of A Fayetteville. And uh, both Washita and uh, and UCA had a uh, physics program, but no engineering program. And I got mm. scholarships to both, but obviously with a private school, you're going to spend a boohoes amount of money. Like a that's lot true. Money. So I was like, I'm not getting into that. I'm not going to spend you know this much money in a given year. I did the math. I was like, no, we're not doing. <laughs> so uh, I kind of threw that mm. off to the side. So it was between UCA and uh, U of A Fayetteville, and I, I think it was just I wanted engineering, man. I think it was just like I I wanted that sort of uh, building things, kind of you know. Uh, yeah, I like working with my hands a lot in physics. That's great, you know, theories and stuff like that, and uh, and so that that's pretty much it. Yeah. Well, and a fun fact: I went there too. I got my master's there. I did it online though. It wasn't in person, but I, I actually think they have a great school. I love the professors I had and everything. So yeah. it's good stuff. Um, well, good, good advice. Uh, was there, is there a tip or a tool or even school advice to help rising in, you know, engineers deciding to go into this field? Sure. Um, well, first off, I just want to tell you, it's going to be tough. You're going to have four years of you going through a gauntlet. I mean, getting attacked from left and right as far as, you know, problems, problem solving, that type of thing. You're going to think, like, I took it for granted uh, whenever I signed up for engineering. I thought, you know, I was president of the math club for two years, president of the National Honor Society. I'm like, dude, this is going to be a breeze. It's not even going to be that big of a deal. And then, uh, you know, the first engineering hit, the first engineering class hit, and it hit like a ton of bricks. Uh, I mean, that's just engineering, period. You got ready buckle up put on your bootstraps it's going to be tough but it's going to be worth it at the end i haven't seen the other side of the tunnel as far as school goes uh you have and it looks like you're very very well off so i think it's i think it's worth it you know if you if everything that's going to be tough is probably going to be worth it at the end that's just how life works so that is true some advice and it is though. hard very yeah. it's a, i mean that's a hard discipline to get into and uh, I mean, to, to get through, um, I, you know, every, like I, every teacher has their own program kind of, and you got to jump through the hoops that they want you to jump through. Sometimes you'll struggle with a professor or you won't understand a professor. Sometimes, uh, I mean, just the concepts themselves are difficult because you haven't heard them before. And so all of those things right. come into, into play and it, it sifts out a lot of, a lot of people i think from the program but yeah i yeah. think you're you're definitely right you got to stick with it um and know that it's it's going to be a challenge for sure i would say i would say after probably the second year that's when you kind of realize like you're in it for the deep end you know you need to go till you in, uh till you quit because about the second year that's when you start seeing people start dropping off um you know when they first when they get through those first two years of sort of introductory classes i guess is what i'm going to describe them as uh mm -hmm. junior year you start getting into the nitty-gritty a lot of times the that semester before your junior year is going to be a very very tough time because it's transitioning from the easy stuff i say easy it's relatively easy stuff uh to the very very difficult like problem solving you're you're molding your brain into an engineer kind of thing it's going to be tough and I think that's a lot of times that people throw in the towel and they're like, I can't do this. And they end up doing something else, like not to diss business or anything, but they'll go to business or something that they can, I guess, relate to more. Um, it's not yeah. really that it's easier, but it's just like, you know, they can sort of grasp it easier, I guess is what I'm trying to say. No, I, I think you're totally right. So uh, it takes a certain brain, I guess. You got to get that V8 juice going. <laughs> maybe that'll help you. <laughs> You're not letting that down, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no way. That's a good one. Uh, okay. Well, that's good advice. Good tips there. Um, definitely um, some quality things we can share with others. So thank you. Let's dive into what your volunteer experience. I've noticed you got quite a bit there, uh, but what what's some volunteer experiences that you've had and you were involved with um, and how has that helped you 
maybe with your engineering future? Sure. Yeah. Um, I would say that my volunteer experience really started when I was about a year and two months. Um, that was when my brother Caleb was born. And I was born with a disease called Hirschsprung's disease. And he was born with it as well, but it was much, much worse. And, mm. uh, and we kind of knew something was a little bit different. Something was not 100% with him. Whenever he was four years old, uh, we took him into the hospital because we noticed that he had had, uh, I say we, it was really my parents. I didn't really have much to do with it. But um, whenever he was about four years old, we took him into the hospital to basically see what's going on. Something's not right. And it turns out that he had um, uh, neuroblastoma cancer. And so that that was a very big awakening for my family. Whenever oh. I was about, I helped Caleb from, you know, that, that time whenever he was four years old, I was five. So the time that he passed when I was eight, he went to uh, go be with the Lord. And from that time, I was always looking for opportunities, how I can help him with his uh, disabilities, how I could help him with how I could help my parents. I just wanted to take him away from the pain that he was experiencing, that type of thing. So I guess I kind of learned volunteer experience the hard way. Um, after Caleb passed, you know, I mentioned earlier that Legos were a big uh, part of my life. Legos were kind of my coping mechanism to it, through that. So whenever kids were watching TV or something like that, I'd be over there playing Legos and uh, and designing stuff out of it. Mm. So it, it kind of taught me a lesson about, you know, adversity. And when the going gets tough, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep moving forward. You can't just quit. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, it definitely, that's good life advice, period. Not just engineering, sure. but it definitely influenced my engineering um, engineering aspect as far as life goes. And uh, and how when, when stuff just hits the fan, you've got to keep moving forward. And, uh, well, I, I haven't heard of that disease. Could you say what that yeah. is again and what, what, what that is? Well, it's a genetic disease. I haven't looked it up in a while, but uh, it's a genetic disease that was passed down through my family and uh, and it attacks the colon. So basically part of my colon was shut down for a while until oh. we realized something's not right. Took me into the hospital. They had to cut out part of my colon. I have wow. a 12 inch scar on my stomach from where they sliced me up. And uh, Caleb, like I said, was much, much worse. I think... Um, I think they had to take out like two thirds of his colon or something. And, wow. Uh, yeah, we both had to wear a colostomy bag for a while, and you know that stuff. Uh, that kind of stuff. You know, people kind of pick on you for for being sure. So growing up, you know, this is kind of personal. So oh. growing up, um, you know, I, I kind of got picked on for those types of things, and uh, and I mean that's just life. You got to keep moving forward. Yeah, that's true. Wow, that I mean, you've got some experience and life is definitely um giving you some curveballs i think through yeah. adversity you've come out learning a lot of lessons i think it's made you who you are um which is kind of special because it's i i think you have some qualities that a lot of people don't uh have in their life and uh, i know some of these rough experiences sometimes we go through um do make you a better person so thanks for sharing that yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, just kind of jump into, I guess, to more school kind of stuff. What's been your favorite subject in school? Um, what, what have you gravitated to, I guess? Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of always been math, I guess. And it, it never really started, um, uh, like I never really had a favorite subject up until probably sixth grade. Uh, Mr. Boyd was my uh, teacher at that point and uh, he'd retired like a couple days ago actually so it's kind of crazy that I'm mentioning him now but thanks he was a super super big impact in my life as far as the passion about math the passion about solving problems and numbers and that type of thing so it was it was really cool to see his passion and that kind of poured into me a little bit kind of influenced me so I think it started about sixth grade whenever math was my favorite subject. And then as far as college goes, favorite subject then. Um, oh, I think. Debatable. 
yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of uh, a lot of classes that were super good and interesting, uh, especially like my senior year. I'm I'm gonna be graduating in December, so I'm I'm writing the nitty gritty of it. Oh, that's great. You know, up until junior year, it was kind of like classes that nobody really cares about. You know, <laughs> <laughs> chemistry and you know, it was like, yeah, can I get this over with? Kind of thing, the humanities. Um, yeah, I think that senior year, there's a lot of interesting stuff like construction management. I never knew about how things were formed, how, you know, how the whole bidding process went. And then I learned all that and that's new information. It's like, this is cool stuff. Uh, foundations was really interesting to me. Soils, not so much. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, huh. I'm really interested in soils, but foundations is cool. I don't know what happened there. Not a dirt um, guy, huh? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, differential equations. I know I said I liked math, but differential equations just spanked my tail. I mean, that was the hardest class I've ever taken in my life. So I think that class, it's either like you get it or you don't. <laughs> yeah, was tough. And I have also noticed that it, it it makes a huge difference on who your professor or teacher is, like yes. you mentioned with math. Yeah. You know, if you have a, a professor that you either can't understand very well or um, doesn't teach the subject very well, then it's hard for you to get a passion for that subject too, because they don't explain the concepts very well. Right. And I'm not trying to like diss on all the professors out there. I think <laughs> there's some really great ones and ones that need some help, but um, it makes a huge difference on really the direction uh, uh, of the like avenue you want to go to. I had a professor that um, I loved that was in water resources. And I didn't think that was be an area I was even be interested in doing, but because he was such a good professor, it makes you start changing your mind because he teaches it so well. So you're utilities, uh, right? I'm in utilities. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's something totally different, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Um, speaking of teachers, what do you do? I mean, if you're in school and you are struggling with one, what, what's some advice you might have? Oh boy. <laughs> you have got any advice now? <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I've had a lot of really, uh, interesting professors, I guess is what I'll say to cover my tail. Um, okay. I've had a lot of interesting professors as far as me not understanding them. You know, the trick to it is you've got to have friends. Uh, you, you've got to have friends who understand the subject, who can maybe teach it in a way that the professors haven't. I know that with my experience, like in differential equations, I'll have a friend who will be able to uh, dissect it, you know, in a better way where it's like, oh, this is what he or she was trying to say this whole time. Like, that's all they had to say, you know. Wow. Um, engineering are a little bit, we're a little bit uh, different wired than other people. And so we have to learn things in a different way uh, than other people. And I guess that just comes down to critical thinking. We think things differently, but I would say just get a buddy, uh, get a friend who's in the same class as you make as many connections as possible. Like, like you said, on LinkedIn, I have uh, a pretty good amount of, of connections. That's just like being outgoing, meeting for new friends. If you sit by somebody new, introduce yourself. Hey, you know, my name's Cody. Uh, you know, how about this class? You know, How'd we get here? Gosh, dang, you know, start a conversation, just talk, uh, you know, cause who knows that could end up like being your, uh, being a future coworker or something like that. Having that previous relationship could really, really, uh, spark things up on the first day or the interview. Even I know yep. that at Garver, um, I knew somebody on the first day who I, I knew freshman year and it was like a reunion. Like I haven't seen you in four years. It's so good to see you. And, uh, and that sparked things. So I would say definitely make connections, see if maybe your, uh, your, your fellow students can introduce things in a different way, in a different light that maybe you could understand better, that type of thing. Yeah. That's great advice. I, I totally agree with you. I remember in school, actually, I had kind of a core study group, as I got into the junior year, you kind of find people that you're, you're, um, you gravitate to and you start creating a, a study group with. And so we always had one guy that just was a genius. He seemed to understand every concept <laughs> that was taught. And I was like, dude, how did you even understand this? <laughs> and he seemed to get it. So 
he'd have to re-explain it to us after classes that we just was over our head yeah. on something. So those kinds of people are different animals. They're insane. Yeah. So I think you're you're spot on. Get a good study group. Get some, you know, start making connections. And what you what you said about eventually you don't know where these people will end up in your career. And I have noticed myself that people I went to school with, you know, they end up working for all these different firms and agencies and stuff. And those connections that you made in school do benefit you even in your career, because if you did Mm -hmm. want to make a career change or you're working with another firm, a lot of these guys you went to school with are, are at these places now. So yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's right on. Um, So you're in school. Are you preparing for the FE? It sounds like you're, I don't think you've taken it yet, but you're, you've got it on a a schedule to take. What's, what's been your mindset with that? What's some advice on preparing for the FE? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, It's kind of funny because, you know, this whole COVID-19 stuff is really throwing a curveball, I guess, at everybody, you know, classes went online and things got canceled. One of those things that got canceled was uh, the FE. And, uh, and that kind of hit home to me because I was planning on taking it like right about now. And, mm-hmm. and I was going to sign up for it. And then COVID-19 had other plans. So um, like I said, that's just part of life. Um, so I would recommend probably watching YouTube videos. I know it's kind of a cliche, but that's kind of what I've been doing whenever I have some free time, you know, like right before bed or something like that, I'll watch a YouTube video. And your Facebook group is like hands down, like one of the best ones out there as far as <laughs> FE help, that type of thing. Like the other day, or I guess it was a couple of weeks ago, somebody posted a question was like, Hey, how do I solve this? And I felt really smart because I pulled out a pen and paper and solved it out. You know, and whenever I took a picture of it, you know, it's one of those moments where you got to look over your work like 10 times to make sure you didn't do something <laughs> stupid. And so I posted it in there and he was like, yeah, I guess that's right. And uh, I mean, it, it's just really, really cool. That foundation that you've said as far as a Facebook group and stuff like that works. It's a uh, civil engineering Academy, right? I think. It's the- yeah. So <clears throat> sorry. If you want to, if you want to join that, we started a community page for yeah civil engineering Academy. And if you just go to ceacommunity.com, yeah, it'll take it you to that group and you can join it. Um, but yeah, it's there for anybody. If you want to, you need help with the FE, you need help with the PE, or if you need help with career advice, uh, we, you know, we share stuff there as well with what's going on on our website and things of that nature. But yeah, it's for every engineer to take advantage of. And, and you get a, a lot of other engineers that are jumping on and can help you at Definitely. all kinds of stages. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, it's been good. Um, yeah. Thanks for mentioning that. That's, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good it's resource. Me. Yeah, it's helped me for sure. So I, I had to name drop it there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, we also do have a YouTube channel for people, and we do try to produce a lot of free problems. Um, we also have courses as well. So if you're interested in any of those, um, we've created a FE course. We called it the Ultimate Civil FE Review Course. Um, you can check it out at civilfereviewcourse.com. And that should that's a tool to help people too. So there's lots of resources out there, plenty to go around. And uh, we just try to, you know, help where we can in that arena. Yeah. So that's good. Um, yeah. And the FE is no joke either. So, you know, prepare well for that. Um, a lot of people uh, have been repeat takers of it over and over again. They kind of get frustrated with taking it. Um, but you got to keep going. Most schools Definitely. require that you take it and pass it to even graduate. So it's definitely a must for sure. You'll have to get back with me on how that goes for you. Yeah, we'll do. (laughs) All right. uh, Next, I just want to do some quick questions, maybe some short answers. I'll just fire these off and you can answer as short as or as long as you want. Um, What's the, I guess, what's the best career advice you've ever received? Have you ever received any about that or just good advice in general? I know you mentioned some already, but. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know, it's funny because I'd always kind of look, I guess uh, I'd always kind of joked with my dad about this because he, every time I leave my hometown to head back to Fayetteville, he'll say, don't be stupid. Don't do anything stupid, that type of thing. So it was kind of ingrained into me, like, not that I'd done something stupid before, but he's like, you have an opportunity ahead of you. You have this golden 
that you can walk across now don't do anything stupid to mess it up i mean you you have everything going for you right now be smart about it so i i kind of always you know grabbed it and went through one ear and out the other kind of thing um but now thinking about it it's like you know that's pretty good advice as far as you know you, you've got something ahead of you don't do anything stupid to mess it up you know be smart um i that, i mean that's that's the best i got that's great yeah great i know advice. that's that's not nearly don't be as stupid good. right it's not the <laughs> not as good of advice as i've been given but i mean that that kind of hits home to me i mean it's like it's simple but it's like kind of deep whenever you think about it you know no, it's great. I think uh, people need to hear that sometimes. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, you don't realize what you got. Um, people that, you know, are ahead of us either in life or whatnot, they see things differently than, than you are when you're in it. So that's, that's really good advice. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. to add on to that, sorry, to add on to that, I, I just thought of something, you know, whenever you're a professional engineer, you have this code of ethics. I don't know if some of you may not have heard it yet. Some of you may, but there's eight canons to uh, engineering as far as code of ethics goes. And whenever you break one, like you're toast kind of thing, like you, you get sent in front of the board, I think, and they can revoke your license. I mean, that, that's serious stuff. So this don't be stupid idea is basically like, you know, uh, always hold paramount the health, safety and welfare of the public. I mean, you, you know, just don't don't do anything stupid that could uh, contradict those statements. I, I know that you know, eight cannons is a lot to memorize, but it's more about like, what would you, like treat people the way you want to be treated kind of thing. So yes, that, that that's, that's pretty much all I got. So. No, that's great. That's a good reminder. Yeah. Uh, ethics kind of can be pushed, you know, to the side sometimes. So that's a great reminder for people and engineers need to be reminded of ethics too. And a lot of times you don't realize like ethical issues until you're like out in the industry dealing with, with customers or clients right. or things of that nature. And so those things come up and, um, uh, I, I think, uh, it's a good reminder for everybody. So that's great yeah. advice. Um, what about this one? How about a personal habit that contributes to your success as a student or even as an engineer? Sure. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm reading a book right now called, uh, the productivity project. I don't know if you've heard about it. Have you? I have not. Yeah, it's, it's super product. Good book so far. product? <clears throat> the productivity project. Uh, this is what it looks like. Hey, look at that by Chris Bailey. Yeah. Accomplish more by managing your time, attention, and energy. Great. We'll yeah, link it. Super, super good book. Um, so far, I've I've only gotten like forty pages into it, but they've already dropped. You know, sort of uh, a habits that you should pick up as far as how to be productive. And they mentioned that, like, to answer your question before I go on a tangent here, uh, put down, I write down a list, like, every day of things that I want to accomplish. So, like, today, if I wouldn't have woke up this early, I would have, wrote down, <laughs> you know, steps on, like, things I want to get done, and I would get done in that order, so to speak. So, like, I would have wrote interview with Isaac or, you know, uh, finish homework or something like that, do homework three or whatever, fill in the blank. And it says, write down three things, three things that you can do in a given day. And whenever you complete those three things, those accomplishments, then you are quote unquote productive for that day. So it, it's kind of interesting because I'd always associated productivity with how many things you can get done in a day. But really, it's uh, if you set a goal for yourself, if you meet that goal, you were quote unquote productive for that day. So it yeah. brings a new aspect as far as uh, new thought processes, I guess, as far as, you know, was I productive? Was I not? It brings on new habits that could help you with your success as an engineer. Um, uh, yeah, I would recommend that book probably. That's fantastic. Um, no, I really like that. Um, when you set a, like a goal to do something, you might not, I mean, you don't see the progression, but you do those things over time and, uh, you're, you're definitely well, well prepared, you're well ahead of the game, you've achieved what you wanted, but it all starts with listing, like, I like that you let, list three things to do in a day, right. and that's awesome. And I, I similarly have to do similar things. I mean, I run a uh, this stuff, and then I also have a full-time job, so this has been, you know, you have to write goals down or else you're just not going to get much done. That's just the nature of it, so yeah, uh, yeah. that's great advice. 
Um, you mentioned that book. I would like, love to link that in some show notes when we get this finished. So that would be fun to do. Um, and I think that's a great book to recommend to the audience. Um, uh, just kind of as we wrap this up, what's something you're interested in today? Like if you had all the resources in the world as a civil engineer, what's something you'd love to help with or work on or what, what, what do you think of that? Um, I've kind of always been fascinated with space, like outer space, you know, the outer dimensions, I guess, things that, uh, nobody really knows about like 5% of the oceans discovered. I think that's, yeah. Like, I want to know, you know, that other 95%. So I kind of thing, um, so there's, you know, billions and billions and billions of light years that we just haven't even touched yet. I don't even know that are out there. I think that is just awesome. So um, I'm not really sure how civil engineering is going to incorporate me uh, job, but I want to work for uh, for NASA someday. Uh, nice. I'm really, yeah, I'm, I, maybe we'll build roads on Mars. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe blue down. tiles on the bottom of the shuttle right yeah <laughs> building some houses in the, on the moon or something man i think it would be so cool to work for nasa i've always been that sort of nerd about nasa things you can ask my fiance like i'll fact drop some stuff on her that's <laughs> boring me um so well, you got it, spacex right yeah. yeah and it wasn't even like you know recently we got spacex and nasa and all that all of a sudden coming up and in a circle. But even before that, you know, I'd always been sort of a, a lover of space. That's awesome. No, yeah. that's, that's fun. That's a fun interest. Yeah. We yeah. don't, there's so much we don't know out there. It's, it's crazy. So it's a great interest to have. Um, I guess as we conclude with this, what's any ending pieces of guidance or, or a way to contact you if people have questions, and maybe want to reach out to you? Sure. Um, you know, I've got a lot of uh, social media, just about every single one of them. Um, I've got a TikTok, so I have like two videos on it. So don't don't put me there. Um, I've also got sort of a me and Melissa. Melissa's my fiance. We have a YouTube channel out there, and our most recent videos was uh, things that we wish we knew before college. And the uh, the YouTube channel mm. called Cody and Mel. Um, Cody and Mel. Really, yeah, it's not necessarily uh, engineering like YouTube, but whenever you need like a break from engineering or something like that, our whole reason behind that YouTube channel is to basically like uh, put fun into life, I guess. So we we cook like we have an episode about making our own pizza, you know, and that's because it didn't turn out very well. Uh, our most recent video was things we wish we knew of before college. Um you know, that all those things are pretty good breaks as far as, you know, from studying or doing whatever when you're laying in bed before, uh, before you go to sleep. Um, so I would, I would recommend our most recent video uh, if you're wanting to connect or comment, maybe give advice uh, as far as things that you wish you knew before college. You could make a comment or do whatever you got to do. So that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll definitely link that as well. So people Thank can you. find you that way and, you know, give some advice on that pizza you cooked and all that good <laughs> stuff. So it did not no, turn out good. well. <laughs> so Cody, thank you for being on the program. It was fun to have you. I think you got a lot of life lessons and a lot of things that you shared with the, you know, with us and the audience that I think could take away something from this. So thank you again for sharing and being on here. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank you. We'll see you later. All right, bye.